Hey guys, welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Olivia and I'm a cinematographer and video editor. And today we're gonna to be talking about self-portrait photography. I've actually been getting into self-portrait photography lately. Um, it's a really great way for me to express my creativity and also it's a great way for me to practice working with light, which is something I really love to do. The very first time ever that I took self-portraits, I posted them to my Instagram and I got a lot of positive feedback and I also got a lot of questions. I actually had a lot of fun making those, so I decided to do it again recently. Side note, if you aren't following me on Instagram, please feel free to head over there and follow me. My handle is I'm Olivia J and also follow me on Twitter. My handle is I'm underscore Olivia J. So since I get a lot of questions about my self-portraits, I decided to make this video to give you some tips on how to take better self-portraits if that's something that you're interested in doing. This is really one of the first things that you should consider when you are making content of any kind, um, but definitely photo and video because lighting is so important and it's going to make or break the quality of your final result for sure. And if you take the time to work out your lighting situation before you get started, it's gonna save you a lot of time and energy and also a lot of editing if you have to try to overcome, say, for the fact that you don't have enough light or the lighting wasn't right. Some things you might wanna think about is what kind of light are you gonna be working with? Do you wanna work with all natural light? Are you gonna have artificial light? Is it gonna be a mixture of the two? If it is artificial light, is it video lights that you're going to be using? Is it photography lights? Is it just lamps in the room? Um, whatever it is that you have access to and whatever it is you're planning to do, it's just important to plan around it and know exactly what you're working with before you start shooting. I recommend coming up with a lighting inventory list. Basically, any lights that you plan to use, the type of light, write it down somewhere or you know have it organized maybe in an outline somewhere so that you know exactly what you're going to be working with before you start. For my first self-portraits, I used all natural light. So I just used the light coming through the window of my bedroom and that's it. For my latest self-portraits, I actually used a mixture of natural light and artificial light. I used one one by one LED panel that I have and then I have windows in my living room and I kind of just open the blinds a little bit. So I used a mixture of the natural light coming through the window and my video light. And I actually did not put a softbox on my light for that shoot. That is not something that I would usually recommend. <laughs> usually I would recommend definitely putting a softbox or diffusing the light because it makes the light more flattering. It, it diffuses it so it's softer on the face. But for this shoot, because I was trying to be a little, little bit more creative, um, I decided not to put a softbox on it. I wanted to have that kind of high contrast look, especially because I did some of the pictures in black and white. And so I really wanted the light to, you know, I wanted to create harsher shadows kind of on purpose. The bottom line is you want to consider your lighting situation before you start shooting. One of the most difficult things to do when you're taking self-portraits is figure out how you're going to control the camera. Now there's a couple of ways that you can do this and it will depend on the camera that you're using. If you're using an older camera that does not have Wi-Fi capability, then the only thing that you could do is try to either set the focus beforehand, um, set up a timer, press the shutter, run in front of the camera, get ready before the picture is taken. The next thing you could do is use a remote like this one. Um, and this basically allows you to control the camera remotely. You press this and the camera registers it and it'll take the picture for you. This is the method that I used when I took my first self-portraits because I was working on a Canon 5D Mark III and that camera does not have Wi-Fi capability and so I decided to opt for the remote option. If you have a newer camera that has Wi-Fi capability, then it's a lot easier because you can control the camera remotely through apps. So Canon, Nikon, and I believe Sony have their own apps that you can download and use and you can basically use your smartphone as the remote. And what's even nicer about that is you can also live view, you can see what's happening in real time. I definitely recommend setting the timer and then you press the shutter and then take the picture. That's the method that I use for my latest 
self-portraits because I use the R6, which by the way, um, my last video, I covered this camera and I talked about some of my favorite things about that camera. So if you're interested in that, go check out that video. I use the camera Canon Connect app um, and it was really easy to use. I know I saw some people complaining that it was difficult to use and the camera, like their camera wasn't pairing with their phone, but I didn't have that issue at all. It actually worked really easily for me and it was great to have that live view. Like I could see up close instead of trying to look at the, I mean, it's great that that camera has an articulated LCD screen because you can turn and see. So I actually used both. I used the LCD screen and I used my phone. Either way, it's really important that you figure out how you're gonna control your camera uh, before you start taking pictures because you don't wanna try to do that while you're like ready to shoot because it'll frustrate you. So you definitely wanna do this beforehand, maybe test it out before you actually do the shoot, make sure everything's working so you know exactly what to do. It'll make your actual shoot day go by a lot smoother. So I kind of talked about this when I was discussing the whole like remote situation and figuring out how you want to control your camera. But I definitely recommend setting a timer to either two seconds or 10 seconds before the picture is taken because it just gives you that buffer to like, you know, get rid of the remote or get rid of your phone. The next thing that I can recommend is like maybe using burst mode setting. You can have a whole bunch of pictures taken at once and then you can go through them and pick your favorite one. So that's kind of nice. I did not do that this last time around or the first time, but maybe I will um, next time to just kind of see if I how I feel about that. But I could definitely recommend, definitely use a timer and then maybe use burst mode and see what you, how you feel about that. And then my last tip is just have fun. Like that's the, that's the amazing thing about self-portrait photography for me anyway. It's a really fun way to be creative and express my creativity and play with light and you know, just take some really cool looking stuff and, and be creative. While I'm always talking about planning and the importance of planning, I do believe it's very important and it does help you, you know, save a lot of time in the moment when you do some preparation beforehand. But once you're like actually taking your pictures, do a lot of different like angles if you want, do a lot of different frames, like get close to the camera, get far away from the camera, play with focus. Like you can literally do anything you want. You can move the light if you're working with artificial light, of course. <laughs> You can move your light and try, you know, different angles of the light, create different shadows, just experiment, you know, do a lot of different things and just have fun. And yeah, that's, that's it. Have fun. So have you taken any self portraits recently? I don't know. I, I like the fact and that it's kind of a challenge. It's definitely an extra challenge to have nobody there <laughs> and you have to figure out how to handle everything. I don't know. I kind of like it, but maybe I'm just doing a lot. <laughs> But yeah, let me know what you think. And if you have taken self portraits recently, or if you're somebody who's into that, please like tag me on social media. I wanna see them. I just think they're so cool. And, and I love seeing all the creative ideas that people come up with. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this kind of content, please feel free to subscribe and follow me on all of my socials and I will catch you in the next video.